Ed Reardon's Week by Christopher Douglas and Andrew Nichols. Episode 6, King of the Road. Live news, live sport. This is Five Live. And that's your weather. Coming up after your news and your travel, your texts and emails on the latest housemate evictions. Do you think Sharon was out of order in the shower with Lee? We want to know what you guys think. Ah. Uh, Monday. And another day dawns in the 12-year-old celebritocracy that is New Labour Britain. Our only hope is that they all succumb to obesity before their 13th birthdays. I'm penning these idle ruminations as a displacement activity for what I really should be doing, which is a thousand words for my school magazine. The subject, the writer's life for me. I diddly dee, not the sniff of a fee. I seem to have added my name to the old boy's website in a weak moment, at the thin end of a bottle of £2.99 Bulgarian cab sav, with which there was nothing wrong at all, I might say. So, I find myself committed to giving careers advice to the lads in the sixth form, well, I suppose now they're pushing 17 are virtually on the scrap heap. Still, one does what one can for the less fortunate. Sorry, that's another 30 pence, please. But it's ten past ten. I'm in the grey sharks zone. The price band for grey sharks is now £2.50. Well, when did it go up? This morning. This facility is now under the auspices of Aqua Splash Co. And could you please read this safety notice? Huh? Due to the nature and use of the changing rooms, the floor may be wet. Well, you carry out blood transfusions in there now, do you? Maybe you make some dangerously wayward soup. No, that's to ensure that our customers... Oh, customers, yeah. Customers formerly known as swimmers. Our customers realise that they enter the changing village entirely at their own risk. <sighs> so that's another 30 pence, please. Yeah, but I've only brought the right money with me. Two pounds twenty. Then you'll have to wait till turtle time, I'm afraid. 8.30 to 9pm. Well, uh, let, let me just nip in and check the lockers. There's usually a few pound coins people have left in there. Not until you've paid your two pounds. Oh, this is absolutely ridiculous. And we would ask customers if they'd mind filling in this customer satisfaction questionnaire after your activity. Well, I'm not doing any more writing than nothing. You can whistle for it. Just sheer affability. One of the great joys of the life literary is the freedom to work whatever hours you choose and be beholden to nobody. You don't have to work in an office or stand outside it if you fancy a smoke. <coughs> you don't even have to wear a suit and tie. You can sit and work naked, but for your bathers if you like. Take it from me, boys. <coughs> yeah. Hello. Ah, it's Jake. Oh, yes, hello. Look, um, I I'm sorry I haven't... Uh... Are, you, are you OK? Yeah. Mm. Yes, I did, yes. Thank you so much. Cash is so very convenient sometimes because banks can get a bit awkward, you know. What are you up to? Uh, oh, scribbling away. This one's autobiographical, but don't worry, none of you lot are in it. But, uh, uh, Jake, how, how, how are you? How, how's college? You're still doing media studies? Of course, that's compulsory these days, isn't it? It's like Chaucer used to be. Module 1, Thunderbirds. Actually, Dad, I'm putting together a series of guest lectures at the uni here, mm. and I was wondering if you could help. Oh, I see. Another favour for no money. So what do you want me to do? No, no, no. All oh, right. Oh, I'm your man. What do you want me to do? Well, I was wondering if you could get me a contact number for Jazz Milvane. Oh, were you? Yeah, because I've, I've tried Miramax. His agents won't help. Oh, sorry. Are you really offended? No. Oh, hang on, I'm just crossing the road. Look, Dad, I'm thinking on my feet here. Mm. How about if we get you involved too? Doing the interview, because you're such old mate. Um, when you say a proper budget, what... Oh, um... yeah, that bit of fee and... Jazz and I wouldn't have to share a room, would we? Actually, I've got to where I'm meant to be now, so I'd better go. Mm. So, is that OK, then? Could you just leave his number on my voicemail? Yes, yes. H how's your mother? Yeah, oh, no, it's gone. So, Ed, here's your train ticket, mm. your go-eat buffet vouchers, taxi fare to the lecture hall, and a printout of your hotel reservation, OK? Go-eat? What's that all about? It, it means you can't go into the restaurant car, but you do get at-seat trolley service. Mm. There you go. And have a nice away day, OK? Oh, thank you for doing this, Pink. If I'd dealt with my son direct, he'd only have shafted me. He's done it before. Oh, he's a bit of a tear-away teen, yeah? Well, I don't know. I haven't seen much of him since he was eight. Right. 
So, so that's when he shafted you? Yeah, bloody little tea leaf. It was a school trip to Whipsnade Zoo. He told me it was Switzerland. I had to give him 200 quid. Cost me half my Eldorado script fee. Mm, but it's so good that you've got a relationship with him. Mm. I just don't know what he's going to do with himself. He seems to be doing OK at uni. No, it's all very well being an eternal student. And he's got the lecture thing well sussed. Yeah, but what happens when he leaves? Ed, the problem is not Jake. It's what we're going to do about you. Ah, well, I've been having some thoughts about that. Uh, have you written anything lately? Well, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm... Well, I, I could, um... So that's a no, I, then? Well, I filled in a questionnaire at the swimming pool. No, um, I, I think for my next project, what I'd like to do bearing in mind the pitiful state of our mm. national culture, is a contemporary anatomy of Britain based on my forthcoming trip to Northumbria. Sort of an English journey, uh, or road to Wigan Pier, following in the footsteps of Priestley and Orwell. You want to just run those names past me again? Priestley and Orwell, right, OK. Um, Harry Seacombe, have you heard of him? Um... Oh, I'm Neddy Seagull! Hee-hee! <laughs> if I rule the world! Are you OK, Ed? Well, anyway, he went round the country in a vintage car. But uh, I won't be doing that. <clears throat> or singing hymns. Uh, somebody mentioned vintage cars. Oh, I'm thinking of writing a modern English journey, Felix. Well, uh, why not? Everyone else is. Bill Bryson, John Knott, Alan Titchmarsh. He must have done one. Uh, you'll have to save all your bus tickets and Apple stickers and what have you so we can use photos of them. That's what you have to do in a book nowadays. Lots of pickies, not much text. Wonderful photography in here. Um, have you seen this? No. Well, you should. Look at that. Two Type 35 Bugattis. Ah. Anyway, Ping, I thought I could write about things that disappoint not just me, but I think all of us. Mm. Uh, So-called customer-friendly jargon. Oh, twin yeah. carbs. Oh, bogus heritage. All those street names on new housing estates like Dean's Monk and Crofthurst. I mean... Who on earth thinks them up? Yeah, uh, Richard Stilgo did a very funny song about them. I'll burn you the CD, Ed. You can play it on your lappy toppy while you do your journey thingy. Oh, thank you, Pink. Mm. I'm awfully impressed with your boy, Ed. Mm. Pushy. I like that. He's at one of those places that calls itself a university, but isn't really. Mm, Northumbria. God knows what he's going to do when he leaves. Well, I have a good mind to offer him a summer job here. Yes, but then there's autumn. What's he going to do then? Tuesday. William Cobbett never visited hell during his celebrated rural rides, so Ed Reardon finds himself filling the void. Mired in the misery of modern travel, I'm about to experience what the incomprehensible announcement will no doubt call our first station stop, followed by a factuous reminder about luggage as a way of deflecting one's attention from the unconscionable lateness of this so-called service. Excuse me, sir. To compound the felony, I'm invited to savour the dubious delights of Go Eat's trolley service. Would you like to...? Yes, I know. Teas, coffees, powdered cappuccino and a range of not very hot and very frozen snacks. Well, actually, we'd greatly value your opinion on our chef's new light meals. Uh, of course, there'll be no charge, as this is by way of being an experiment. Uh, no doubt a tottering pile of brie and mandarin oranges drizzled with olive oil. Well, actually, the chef's very keen on traditional fillings, uh, as long as it's the best of whatever's fresh. Yeah. Well, why not see if there's anything here that takes your fancy? Meanwhile, can I offer you a glass of red or white wine? Uh, so just bear with me while we slow down. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We will shortly be arriving at Peterborough Station, 12 minutes ahead of schedule. Uh, red, please. Doubt if I'll be amused by its undrinkability. It's a new Sicilian, sir. Very lively. If you are disembarking at Peterborough, why not visit the cathedral, first built in 655 AD? and the burial place of Catherine of Aragon, a figure of real importance, unlike what passes for celebrity on television these days. <clears throat> I'll give him that. You by any chance a writer, sir? Yes. Right now, a bit of a thwarted one. i to delete all this. Uh, sir, you wouldn't mind turning down the speakers on your laptop a little? This is a quiet carriage. No, sorry. Is this man causing trouble again? Oh, hello. And see you on the platform. I was in the restaurant car. Very acceptable steak and kidney pork. Probably don't get that sort of thing in uh, Hollywood. You, Mr. Milvane. <laughs> Only when I have it flown in. <laughs> Where are you going? Well, I'll be in the same place as you. What? Talking to the students? Yeah. Good people, aren't they? Ticket arrives, cash for the cab. There's a very bright boy who talked me into it. You want to keep in with him in case you meet him on the way down? Or are you on the way up? I never know which way you're going. Oh, that's my son, Jake, actually. Oh, I remember him. 
Oh, sorry, everybody. Should have turned that off. That's all right, Mr. Milfane. We'll let you off this time. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. And if you want to shout action, well, that's a wrap. That's fine, too. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, well, boy, wanting to know if I want still or sparkling water on stage. He thinks of everything. You don't know who's going to be asking the questions, do you? Probably some deadbeat local hack, usually is. There's me, actually. Ah, oh, sparkling, I think. Wednesday night, or is it? In a featureless, anonymous hotel like this, it could be any time, anywhere in the world. No, i better keep it in this country. It is my English journey, after all. Were it not for the TV screen displaying the message, Welcome, Ed Rear, I probably wouldn't even know who I am. Small wonder that after a few weeks on tour, staying at hotels like this, a rock band feels the need to throw the trouser press out of the window and take the mint from the pillow and flush it down the WC like so many crazed Visigoths. Better just check Google to see there isn't already a band playing under that name. Just order whatever you want. So can I have the most expensive thing on the menu? Sure. Mind you, that's only £3.95. So, Dad, how's it going? Plenty of work? Plenty of girls, I'll bet, if you're a reardon. Actually, I'm a rear here. Oh, you know. So, nobody special on the scene? Not really. There might have been one, but she was allergic to cats. Ah, so playing the field, then. <sighs> Look, can I get a drink? Of course. The wine list's on the other side. Oh, right. A bit light on text, this menu. Easy to wipe clean, though, I imagine. I know why. Please have a scene to make the scene. Oh, well, come on, Dad. Tell me how work's going. One or two things in the pipeline. There's, um, well, there's this job I'm doing for you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm, um, and uh, there's this English Journey project. Oh, sounds interesting. Mm, it sort of exposes the shallowness of our culture. How everything's rotten, basically. And it's pretty hard hitting. I expect most publishers would be too scared to print it. <laughs> well, in that case, there's no point in going to all the trouble of writing it, really, is there? Um, y yes, can I have a bottle of that red one with the smiley face, please? It seems to me that you should be thinking of writing something that people actually want to read or see on television or rent from the video shop. So, um, how's your mother? How's that toy boy of hers? He's only six months younger than you are, Dad, and he's about to be ordained. <laughs> Typical. But she'd say just the same, you know? About what? Your career, or lack of it. Well, I sent you each a copy of my last book, Pet Peeves. Oh, yeah. Did it make any money? Uh, I, I don't know yet. Well, yes, but they, 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 they don't really tell you these things for years. But, um, look, this thing I, I'm doing with jazz tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. Complete sellout. Could have filled the place three times over. Well, maybe I could do some more of this kind of thing. Well, let's just see how this one goes. Eh, but I, I could introduce you to all sorts of other people in the business and then interview them. Or I could do one myself, if you like. Evening with Ed Reardon. Ed Reardon and friends. We could get on the... Um, college lecture circuit. You go to America, you make an absolute stack over there. You could film them, get them on BBC Four as a series. I've done it before. When they made that Aquarius film about me in 1978, before you were born, but it was very well received. I think we should go for it, seriously. Let's not run before we can walk, OK, Dad? Uh, why do you always have to do this? Do what? Well, be so boring and sensible all the time. It makes me cute. the cards were stacked against us. Me, a blind Jewish girl, for God's sake, and Dermot, a dolphin. Yet in a funny kind of way, that game of softball showed us that somehow, sometime, we'd pull through. Maybe not in this life, but whenever. Very powerful ending, Jazz, and uh, interesting that you thought you could get away with it. Yeah, that's why I insisted on putting that voice over him. It's a tricky subject, but I wanted to go for the truth of the situation. Mm. Otherwise, there'd be a danger of, well, as the producer said, she gonna make out with a fish or not? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the Academy seemed to agree that I wasn't too far wrong. Uh, difficult family relationships are something of a running theme in your work. Um, it goes back to, well, to our first collaboration. Oh, yes, Sister Mum. An adaptation of my novel. I think it's sufficiently far in the past for me to 
fess up and admit that I always absolutely loathed that title they gave it. Oh, uh, what, you think we should have stuck with Who Would Fardles Bear, do you? <laughs> That's going to pack out the multiplexes, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Film is often referred to as a director's medium, and I, I suppose it is in the sense that writers tend to be disgracefully badly treated and ill-used. Is there any hope that this might change? Well, it would if they delivered the rewrite on time instead of getting drunk and having a tantrum every time we wanted to change a comma. <laughs> then trying to get off with Sally Field when she needed to concentrate on her difficult abortion scene. Oh, which wasn't in the book, of course. But... Talking of multiplex or mainstream cinema, and I think it's fair to say that despite your early promise, that that's where you are now, mm -hmm. um, I wonder how you react to criticism of your recent work. Such as? Well, I, I, I've got a cutting here. Thought you might have. <laughs> In every Warner village, you will find a Warner village idiot happily watching the movies of Jazz Milvane. <laughs> um, question his taste, and he'll say... Oh, I like the Jazz Milvain films. Where was this? I could watch they all day, because I'd be the lowest common denominator, B.I. You've just written that in. That's your writing. That's a fair point, though, isn't it? You, you're just a sad, frustrated failure. That's your trouble. Oh, you're just a disgrace to your profession. Oh, you've asked for it now, matey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speedboat in Malibu! I pays for his Viagra and stupid bloody hair dye! Get off! Now, do you think of lecture theatres as stuffy old places where nothing exciting ever happens? I know I do. But in a violent scene reminiscent of one of his movies, Hollywood movie director Jazz Milvain uh. traded some punches today, except this time the fight wasn't at the Earth's core, but in a lecture theatre at the university. Don't be angry with I! I pay for his speedboat in Malibu! And his assailant wasn't a monkey, but one Ed Reardon, described as a writer. The celebrity lecture went disastrously wrong when the bearded scribe decided the sword was mightier than the pen. Oh, don't turn it off. That's where he falls off the stage and cuts his head. Not a very good start, was it? Sorry. <laughs> and this is the sort of thing you want to take to America? Well, we could. Kind of thinking man's wrestling. I wouldn't mind taking a swing at that woman who made the piano, too. Or Richard Curtis. He's been asking for it for about five films now. I've lost my promoter's licence because of that. Well, I'm sure something else will come along. Find another way of making money. Help yourself to your new stepfather's collection plate. Start an airline or something. Oh, if you're just going to treat it all as some kind of joke, then... Well, I wash my hands of you. All right, just give me my hundred quid my ticket home and I'll see you in another ten years. What? Thursday. Apparently there was a clause in the small print of my contract that the fee, and with it the return half of the ticket, would only be payable on completion of the engagement to the satisfaction of my employer, i.e. my son and any future employers yet to be discovered wheresoever in the solar system. Luckily, I was able to draw Jake's attention to the past and claw back some of the monies fraudulently acquired for his non-existent charity walk in 1992, which meant I had a tenner to get back home. The gravy train had suddenly become the somewhat thinner gruel of the National Express coach. Oh, so I get off here, do I? Yeah, it's another £17.50 to work Hampstead, mate. Ticket offices through there, behind Bay 21. Bay 21? Right. Thank you. OK. My predicament was one of those gifts that sometimes comes to a writer out of the blue. Suddenly, having no money granted me the freedom of the open road and access to real people living a visceral existence at the sharp end. Now, look, you've spilt it all over that man's uh, laptop. It's, it's quite all right. I think I may have saved it. Have I? Do you want this for your trousers? Ah, yes, there it is. People rooted to the land, unlike the dismal denizens of our dumbed-down celebrity-obsessed media. You're going to buy something if you want to sit there, mate. Sorry? Oh, yes, buy something. Um, wh where would I, uh... Over there. Right. Uh, thank you. Yes. OK. Uh... See, he's gone the wrong way. He had no intention of buying anything. I'm sure I've seen him on TV. Probably a writer. We get a lot of them in here. Ever since they found out that uh, J.K. Rowling used to write in caps. Here, let me uh, wipe that up for you, love. Uh, do you want another slushie? My dear boy, how are you? 
Felix, I'm actually in a spot of bother. Well, it sounds like jolly good material for your literary peregrinations. Where are you now? I'm in Lincoln. Oh, got yourself in prison again, have you? Well done. Jonathan Aitken's career went from strength to strength after a spell in Chokey, and I've just done a very good deal on his novelisation of the Bible. Look, all I want to do is get home and feed my cat, so could you send me a bike with some money? Or just a bike and I can get a lift on the back of it? Oh, tut, tut. You're supposed to be doing a modern English journey, tramping the King's Highway. You don't think Jack Kerouac called his agent, do you, bleating for money and saying, I'm only on Route 65 and I need a lift the rest of the way? No, he didn't. He stuck his thumb out, had a reefer, and got on with it. I, I'm sorry, but I refuse to hitchhike. I don't want to have to listen to lorry drivers telling me how they thought they could do a bit of writing if they only had the time. Oh, just a minute. Uh, Ping wants to say something. Ed, this sounds really exciting. You could be a highwayman to get some longer. You could be like, your money or your life, yeah? Or, 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 or you, you could sell your body. Well, that's very kind of you to think that might be an option, Ping, but I fear it wouldn't get me much further than Bulldog. And I've got a writing class to teach tonight, so I... I... No, hang on, I... I see if I can... Oh! Well, normally I'd say 50 quid. It did cost 600. Yeah, but it's got all this stuff on it. Oh, that was just some toddler spilt its wretched slush puppy on it. Saving it from heart disease in the nick of time, no doubt. No, all this rubbish on the hard drive. No. Well, couldn't you just burn that onto a CD? Yeah, we can do that. Cost you 65 quid, plus bat. Yeah. So it's all a question of what you want to do, my friend. I see. I'll say you dumped the lot. How many quid would I get then? 40 exactly, sir. Cash. Right. You sure? Pity to lose a screensaver. Nice looking cat. Yes, but I'll be seeing the real thing again soon enough, so, um, yeah, go on, go ahead. Go on. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Friday forenoon, in which our hero finds himself having to write everything out in bloody longhand because he's forced to sell his laptop, forsooth. But at least it gives me a useful insight into the working methods of my illustrious predecessors, Cobbett, Daniel Defoe, George Orwell, though he was probably working on an early Amstrad, or at least an Enigma machine. Better just check that on Google. Ah, oh, damn. Damn and blast! <clears throat> nice to have me back, isn't it, Elgar? And who needs a screensaver when you're sitting there? There now follows an account, both honest and truthful, two L's and an E there, I think, of the extraordinary turn of events which began yesterday eventide when I hired me to Berkhamsted Leisure Centre where I was engaged to teach my writing class. So although it is a personal journey you're writing about, it's very important that you have the necessary research to back it up. My own recent work, for example, <laughs> I made it my business to find out that the ticket office at Lincoln Bus Station is adjacent to Bay 21. So, uh, well, do, do stop me if there's anything you want to ask me. Uh, we'll seem very quiet this evening. So if you have facts like that at your fingertips, to give the work the extra flavour of reality, only then can you sit down to work with confidence. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what have I said? It is him. He said it. I told you it was him. I'm still not convinced. No, it's him. It's him. What's me? It's you in that new Piles commercial. MRX. It's good, I'll give you that. Well, it certainly is not me. Not some celebrity product endorser. Well, you are now. It's one of those postmodern ones where they use a bit of old film. And it's you in the old film. Can you say it again? Say what again? Hemorex. Now, now I, I can, can sit, sit down, down to, to work, work with, with confidence. confidence. Now I can sit down to work with confidence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Stan, Stan, put that TV on. It's on Channel 5 every ten minutes. I don't have to wait long. <laughs> you can turn it on if you like, but I assure you it's not me. You've got big sideboards and an engine driver's hat on, and you sit down in a big egg-shaped chair. I had sideboards like that. I had a lot. Dolly Bird and an E-type. People used to think I was Jason King. I did once have an egg-shaped chair. I used to sprain my ankle on those Cuban heels. I welcome the advent of the deck shoe with open arms. Here it is. Shut up, Stan. Here it is. Look. This looks like one cool cat in the downstairs department. What do you say, baby? Now I can sit down to work with confidence. Hemorex and Hemorex spray. Sorry to me, baby. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, my God. And that was from the Aquarius about my writing life. First thing he's had on TV since Tenko. 
it's ringing, you check you're on for the gig at the Lamb on Sunday. We'll get you a chair so you can <laughs> sit down to work with confidence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremy Hunter here from the Old Salopian. Just to let you know, we're going to hold back your piece on a writer's life until you're a little less notorious. So I hope you're a... <laughs> comfortable with that. <sighs> Hammer X, ow! Hammer X, that's the one! Ooh, Ed Ridden sticks it up in. <laughs> now that's enough of that. So, Andy Warhol was wrong, wasn't he, Elgar? I fear this is going to go on for a lot longer than 15 minutes. Or was it Ted Moult who said that? Ah, another well-wisher? No. Uh, hi, Ed, it's Ping. Are you, like, sitting comfortably? What's this? A cheque for ten grand. Ed, you should prepare yourself to receive several more of these. I thought you'd called me in to sack me. <laughs> when we realised it was you in that extraordinary commercial with the hair and the chair, the ping went down to the cellar and found the old contract. They hadn't cleared your permission, Ed. We had them over a barrel. By the time I finished with them, they were in sore need of an immediate application of their own product. Well, you'll excuse me. I'll go and pay this in before they change their minds. Now yeah, we'll get someone to do that for you. You're going to be far too busy. We've got to go through your diary because there's a shed load of offers coming in. There's pop eye. They want you to be one of the judges. Absolutely not. You can say what you like about 12-year-olds to an audience of millions instead of just me. Oh, I hadn't looked at it like that. That's after you've got back from Series 6 of I'm a Celebrity, get me out of here. Swapping the mean streets of Berkhamstead for the Australian jungle. Yeah, what if I get bitten by a poisonous spider? What's my obituary going to say? Piles man dies. Don't knock it, Ed. They're talking about using another bit from that old film where you say, I can't sit down without it. But I, I was talking about my pipe. I'm a novelist. And that's why we're going to get you on the Booker Prize panel. Congratulations, Ed. You've made it to the C-list. <laughs> Boy, come in here. Now he can pay this check-in while we go to lunch for the rest of the day. Yes, sir. Jake? Hi, Dad. Hey, respect. I wish I could say the same. Ed Reardon's Week starred Christopher Douglas with Stephanie Cole, John Fortune, Ronnie Golden, Sally Hawkins, George Dalton, Vicky Pepperdine, Martin Hyder, Philip Jackson, Rita May, Jeffrey McGiven, Dan Tetzel and Jeffrey Whitehead. It was written by Christopher Douglas and Andrew Nichols. Technical Jiggery Pokery was by Alec Hale Monroe, Gary Newman and Carl Phillips. The producer was Simon Nichols.